You're gonna have people hating on you, wanting to see you fail. But you can't let that stop you from achieving your dreams, y'all. Keep moving on, and you'll get there. Come on, it's easier to assume that the world as it is, is how it must be. You open up the newspapers, you watch television, you walk down the streets, and what do you see? You see conflict and violence and strife and war and poverty and inequality and injustice. The country was uh, hopelessly bought off and, and uh, horrible. This country is falling apart. More and more young people are beginning to fight and so there's a huge mass of people that makes a difference in terms of the ability of movements for change it seemed to me that we were entering an incredible period of revolution and I don't know this one. he was a wonderful speaker and every time he would speak in Chicago, there would be huge crowds, and he inspired people tremendously. They knew that he was one of those people who could be a leader on a very important, profound, and wide level. Our time seemed to have its finger on the pulse of the growing counterculture. For many young people, it had become larger-than-life figures. Their successful actions only added to the mystique. You know, many of them were, were attractive, personally. They were into youth exuberance. We are everywhere, and we're happy, and we're free, and we want to make the world free. You and I together, we will remake this country, and we will remake the world. We're building a movement. Why not? Black people are fighting, brown people are fighting, South time the young people and working people in this country to begin to fight. The pundits like to slice and dice our country. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. Whatever it takes, we'll do by any means possible. I was going to do whatever I had to do to be able to be part of it committed to being a part is going to be a really serious and ongoing you know, upheaval that had the potential to put in its place something much more humane. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union. Power to the people. We, we want to make a revolution. We think there has to be a revolution. We had done lots of build up on college campuses. It was this kind of intense moment of trying to uh, transform a group of relatively privileged students into fighters and steal ourselves for what we saw was the coming upheaval. Why can't we believe? Why can't we hope? Why can't we dream? Kind of like being 13 and seeing Sean Cassidy and we're all just on board. To me, it was just too cultish. We know we're being fooled, but we kind of like it. I can't get off this ride, it's too good. To me, there was an aspect of what we did that was psyching ourselves up to, to make the jump over this hurdle from sort of a more comfortable middle class life. We're all trying as we attempted to break out of the repression of the past into the revolutionary future. As with so much in my life, I needed a theory rationalizing what we were doing. We were building political collectives bonded with this among all members. We are the ones we've been waiting for. This urgency of now. Youth must choose sides now. We must either fight on the side of the oppressed or be on the side of the oppressor. At that point in our thinking, there were no innocent Americans at least not among the white ones. If only the passive roles of ignorance, acquiescence, and acceptance of privilege. All guilty. But more importantly, I was overwhelmed by hate. I cherished my hate as a badge of moral superiority. We had to do whatever we had to do. We're in a revolution. Don't ever say we're going into a revolution. We're in a revolution. 
Now the question is, who's going to win it? So we felt pretty grim and pretty determined at the same time that we were going to see this thing through. There's a revolution in process. Join us. That's it. That's basically what they were saying. Join us or f*** you. Often I wake up and find it completely inexplicable how and why I am where I am today. The movement began to devour itself. There was the absence of all the things that made the movement so powerful. Absence of trust, absence of love, absence of a sense of humor, ab absence of commitment, absence of this communal, we're all in this together. All that stuff seemed to have been blown apart. Yes, the psychic upheaval was so intense and the loss of ideological underpinnings and clarity about the world is, is so severe. By the mid-70s, the Weather Underground was a kind of um, reverberation in time, a kind of golden oldie. The end happened because most all poli leftist political organizations, when they reach the point of irrelevancy, turn on themselves. My name's David Gilbert. Uh, I'm now in Comstock prison doing a life bid. Either I'm really an optimist and have just oceans of hope and joy, or I'm really stupid and too dumb to know what's happening to me. And I still feel that sometimes because I wasn't in the leadership, you know, I wasn't making decisions, but I still feel responsible because I didn't say at any point, wait a second, we better know what we're talking about before we start actually taking actions. And, you know, I regret that to this day. And it's still eating away at me, just as it did 30 years ago. Transform a group of relatively privileged students into fighters. If you think that you have the moral high ground, that's a very dangerous position and you can do some really dreadful things. Vanity. Definitely my favorite sin. <laughs>